So uh, face bows or ear bows are, um, there's nothing magical about them. And in fact, they're, they're just that, they're average value. They don't give us a, uh, a precise hinge access location. There are hinge access locators, uh, but they take, gosh, 20, 30 minutes for somebody that's really good uh, at it. And the, the, fortunately for us, uh, using an average value mounting, an average value ear bow or face bow, gives us enough accuracy that it works. And that's, that's fortunate for us and for the patients because it gets us close enough to that, that hinge axis that the work we do on the teeth, which is a few inches away from that, uh, actually turns out to be pretty, pretty darn accurate. Each one of the systems is kind of a variation on a theme. So this is the, the Panadent system. And uh, uh, you're, you're probably most familiar with that. The bite tabs that we use are just the Panadent tabs. You can use any kind of wax, Aluwax works, uh, any kind of wax that you can soften. Uh, these bite tabs are nice and convenient just because they're very clean, they're easy to apply, they're fairly easy to get off. Uh, and then the, the bow itself is, is, so these go into the ear holes, you know that. And then this vertical positioning of the bow is determined in most systems by either a nasion locator, which goes right at nasion, right at the, at the top of the bridge of the nose between the eyebrows, or another alternate method is the suborbital locator. I kind of like to avoid that personally because it's a good eye poker if you're not careful. But uh, it, that, that is two point right at, um, and it would be basically the suborbital foramen. And uh, there's a way to, in one of the other systems, I'll show you in just a minute, the Danar system, to actually put a little mark there and then locate your, your ear bow or your face bow at that vertical. Now, because it's an average value, it does not have to be precise. It just needs to be close. So whether you use the suborbital locator or nasion, they both give you about the same results. Again, I like to just tighten this good and tight so it doesn't swing out of the way and poke somebody in the eye. So just, if you're not gonna use that, just tighten it, keep it out of the way. Nasion works very nicely for uh, getting the, the vertical. And then, once you've taken your face bow, as you know, um, you take, you don't need to take Nasion off, although you can, but you uh, release this transfer assembly from the bow itself. And then we go to the articulator and you take off the, the normal uh, guide pin table and put on this transfer assembly connector right here. And you want to put it, if I can get that out enough there. There we go. So slide that in. It goes in so that the taller member is to the front. Uh, so you can read, read Panadent as you're, as you're looking at it. And then, uh, oh, let's see, that goes in the tall one, not the short one like that and then when you when you tighten this this has a this has a little flat point so it, this is basically a set screw and it straightens it up when you when you snug it down like that uh, once that is in place and as long as you've snugged these down uh, clinically snug this this screw and this one as long as you snugged it down pretty firm Clinically, uh, you don't need to use the little support. There is a little uh, T support base that fits on this. Uh, I find that that's just a little bit extra and it's one extra piece. You can use it if you want to. And then make sure that your guide pin is, your incisal guide pin is set on zero. So right there, this can actually be just moved out of the way like that. And then that keeps this member parallel with the tabletop when the cast is, is mounted. So we would simply place the cast in there like that. 
we'll mix up our stone in just a few minutes and uh, the other thing of course you have to do and this is a nice aspect of these panadents uh, is that magnetic attachment that makes things nice and quick and easy one of the things you have to be really careful of with any mounting whether it's magnetic or not is just make sure that there's no debris stone or anything else wax here or here these tend to, these tend to get a little bit dirty and uh, they can obviously if there is some debris there it will affect the accuracy of of that mounting so let's move on to the uh, dinar system again very similar to the panadin uh, the dinar is a it's called a slidematic face bow it rather than being like a scissor bow it slides the results are the same and Daynar does not have a nasion locator. So you're forced to use the suborbital pointer, which is fine. But uh, if you want to avoid <laughs> the way this works, uh, and this is just one extra thing to clean clinically that um, if, you, if you just, and I'll tell you in just a minute how you do it. This goes right between the incisal embrasure of number six and number seven, teeth numbers six and seven. And if you set that on the incisal edge between six and seven, this should point to the suborbital position that this pointer goes to. So that this little ruler is made to go to the patient, set this in the incisal embrasure between six and seven, and then you make a little mark right at the base of the eye where that pointer is. Now that's one way to do it. Keep in mind though, this doesn't have to be that precise to be accurate enough. So what you can do is you can simply eyeball the level of your bow at the base of the orbit. Without using the pointer, you can look, you can look at the patient from the front and tell when this is at the right level. So that's another way to use this and, and avoid going to all the trouble of, uh, of their little suborbital pointer. Again, this transfer assembly is very similar to uh, the Panadent. One advantage is these are finger screws. Uh, with the Panadent system, you're forced to have this extra tool to tighten these joints with the transfer assembly. Whereas with Danar, uh, you can tighten these uh, with, with just your hands and you don't need an extra wrench, so that's kind of nice. All of the systems require you to change out your uh, incisal guide table. They have a mounting assembly, and this is the one for Danar. That simply connects in the same place where your incisal guide table is. Make sure that your incisal guide pin is set at zero, like that. And then uh, this assembly simply sets in place like that. There is a set screw here. And it looks like this, uh, this system actually is missing, but I think this screw will actually work. It goes on the incisal guide table. I'll try it and see. Oh, see, I lied to you. It won't work. So there is a missing set screw there. So normally you tighten the set screw, and again, just like with the Panadent, there is a, a flat set Piece. It only goes in there one way. The, the nice thing about this system, the set screw uh, does not, is not required to straighten it up. The flat part is on the back and it fits, it only fits one way. So once that's in place, then uh, you of course put your uh, mounting plate in place. Again, being careful that there's no debris between the members. Uh, this is a disadvantage to this system. You don't have a, the magnetic connection like Panadent does. Not a big disadvantage. It does take a little extra time. And then your maxillary cast would go like that. And you could go ahead and mount it with that system. Again, very, very similar between the systems. And then finally, let's look at Witness. 
Whitmix is my favorite simply because, not that it's any better, they're, they're all really the same, but if you'll notice, all of the moving parts on Whitmix are metal. <laughs> it's like a Mack truck, uh, literally. Uh, they're very, very durable. Uh, plastic parts uh, do wear, and so the plastic parts that are in the uh, fossa, the condylar fossa, on the denar will wear. Uh, these plastic fossa will, will wear over time, and so anything that's plastic is not going to be quite as durable as uh, the metal that you get with the Whitmix. So again, they're all, all very similar with uh, the Whitmix. Uh, it's a nasion locator, uh, very similar to the Panadent that way. They don't give you the option of the suborbital. You don't need it. Uh, nasion is very, very easy to use. So after you, and one other advantage is these are, um, th these are finger screws to tighten this assembly in place, and they're all metal. With time, these finger screws will break. Uh, these won't. <laughs> they're just a little bit more durable. So again, you take this off of your bow and put on this little metal tab here at the top. Get it started there. Just like that. And now uh, Whitmix's transfer is just a little bit different. It goes on like this. Okay, I got it in the right spot. Nope. It only fits in one way, so there you go. There are several different holes there. Then you put the, the mounting plate. As you can see, these mounting plates have been used before. I used to pay my kids a nickel, a nickel a plate for them to break the old model, the old cast off and salvage these just because I'm kind of cheap. So uh, these can be reused as long as they're not abused. This again goes to zero, which it is set at zero like that. And then this is basically just an angular connection that fits down into this assembly. So. Uh, I believe we may have to move that. So that straightens it up like that. And then this guide pin actually gets moved all the way out of the way because it sets down on that little metal tab. And there you go. So uh, and that's the whip mix system. And that's basically what you would go through to uh, mount the upper member to make your, your faceboat transfer complete. Thank you.